Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg is dropping the charges for nearly all of the pro-Palestinian protesters who were arrested after taking over Columbia University's Hamilton Hall this spring. The April 30th arrests making a major flashpoint in the weeks-long anti-Israel demonstrations at the university. And here to react, former New York Congressman Lee Zelding. Uh, Congressman, thanks for being with us. This is pretty new. No charges, all dismissed for everything we saw at Columbia. There is no justice system when you have Alvin Bragg as your prosecutor. There were criminal laws that were broken, and there are no consequences. So for those helpless Jewish students and members of the faculty who were hoping that there would be consequences after watching all these crimes getting committed, this is another day of disappointment. And, you know, just before I came on air, I went to the New York Post website, and the top story was about a group of Columbia administrators who were caught texting each other, mocking <laughs> uh, Jewish students, talking about anti-Semitism on campus. Uh, so if you're not going to have the accountability that you need on campus and the culture is going to continue to get eroded, laws are going to get broken, the prosecutor is not going to prosecute, this will get worse. The people who have committed these crimes will only get emboldened. Yeah, they're flying all kinds of flags. And meanwhile, the people that were flying flags at the Capitol, the January 6th, protesters are sitting in prisons. It's really unbelievable. You wrote an interesting op-ed this week. You're saying that when we've been talking about how much Donald Trump has increased in, in the polls here in the state of New York, we're assuming he could get close like you, but that it wouldn't happen. But your op-ed says why, that why Donald Trump has a real chance of winning in New York. Do you really believe that? Uh, President Trump is actually closer now at this point of this campaign than I was two wow. years ago at this point of the governor's race. Uh, the state has continued to shift right. And interestingly enough, a couple weeks ago, I looked at the updated voter registration data for the state. You know, one might think that a whole bunch of Republicans, conservatives just given up and left the state. Uh, well, it turns out that the Democratic Party registration is down over 100,000, while the Republican registration is up, the Conservative Party registration is up, and people who are non-affiliated voters, it's also up. Uh, and the polls that are coming out, like the new Siena College poll that came out just a couple days ago, that shows this race within single digits, it under samples Republicans. It mm. oversamples New York City. And they didn't even ask about Robert Kennedy Jr. at all on the ballot. So I would say that the race is actually a bit closer than even what those polls are showing. And also, you know, under the radar is how the disunity within the Democrat Party right now um, in a local uh, House race, a record $23 million has been spent uh, in the primary battle between Jamal Bowman and uh, I think uh, uh, George Latimer is running against him. Um, you know, that's got to be a big part of why Trump is doing well. Right. There are independents and Democrats who have gotten turned off by the Democratic Party. Uh, Eric Adams' numbers are lower than ever. Kathy Hochul's numbers are lower than ever. Joe Biden's numbers in the state as well. And then you have issues that have emerged, like, for example, the, the illegal migrant crisis, mm -hmm. which two years ago wasn't that big of an issue. You look at that primary that's coming up uh, just in a few days here in New York between Jamal Bowman, one of the squad members, and George Latimer, who is a county executive in Westchester County. He's raised millions millions of dollars. He's getting his message out. It's certainly going to be one to watch. He has a real chance of taking out a member of the squad. Yeah. You know, before we go, Congressman, you served in Congress quite some time. So I just want to ask you this. Uh, this week on the Will Cain show, I had Senator Mark Wayne Mullen on. And Senator Mullen, I asked him, do you think Joe Biden will be the nominee? He said, I think it's actually a 50-50 proposition. He said, I think it's so weird we're having a debate before a convention. And I think it's, this is his estimation. It's a trial balloon. Let's see yeah. how he goes. And then I said, well, who do you think it would be? And this is why I wanted to put this to you. He goes, well, I think there's a name out there no one's talking about. And he said, Hakeem Jeffries. And, and you served in Congress with Hakeem Jeffries. He's like, everyone else is playing to the left. Hakeem is trying to position himself as more of a moderate. Um, I just want to see what you thought about, is that a name we should be talking about more? If, if, if they move from Joe Biden, is, is it really somebody like Hakeem Jeffries? Fascinating theory. I think Hakeem Jeffries wants to be the Speaker of the House. Uh, I don't. I actually believe that Joe Biden is going to be the nominee. I think that's what we're on pace for right now. And and to that point, you mentioned Hakeem Jeffries. We've heard names like Gavin Newsom and Gretchen Whitmer, and of course Kamala Harris and others. I don't think you can just 
coronate someone else because mm -hmm. all these other people, they all want to be president, and the next president, in their minds, might be president for the next eight years. So I don't think it's so easy. I think it would be quite a civil war in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. I think that they're stuck with Joe Biden. The only way you can pull that off is if you have Convention. a thoroughly unified party and you don't have a thoroughly unified That's Democrat right. party right now. Mm -hmm. Elise Eldon, thank you so much. Great all stuff. Right, thank you all. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.